So I'm very, very, very pleased to welcome NRS now to the theatre, who are actually sponsoring the O2 Theatre, which is very good of them. Um, and they're going to talk a little bit about their services and what they're up to from an NRS perspective. So NRS are our ISIS contract um, in Kent. So I might say no, because I might steal their thunder. Can I introduce And thank you for allowing us to come in and talk to you about some of the hard work that the mainly the Kent clinical team are doing. I'm Ali O'Hara. I'm a regional manager across the South Coast, but also OT in the Southampton and Portsmouth depots. So um, part of my team is the Kent team. So we've got the least probably known for most of the Kent clinical team, we've crossed over to them all. Um, Denise Spear, who will introduce herself in a minute, is OTA. I was, if Denise doesn't know it, I'm, I'm absolutely glad we asked this, but she knows most things. There's Katie Bowler, who's our um, OTA, OTA and OT apprentice, is at, at the back. She has a background is in psychology and she goes to commentary and uni to become an OT. There's Georgia Gibson, the new girl, um, who's OTA. She's also got Healthcare degree and there's a background in like, working as an, OT, an OTA in various departments. And then there's Jenny, who's the OT, who's got quite a long working history in mostly, mostly health settings. Jenny, sorry. <laughs> so, Monet, for those of you that haven't spoken to me or sent emails in, we've had conversations online instead. My name's Jenny Claret. Um, prior to working at NRS six years ago, coming to NRS, I was spent almost just shy of 25 years um, in social services in the Dartford Liberation area, so I was out and out doing visits, equipment adaptations, stair lifts, and people were paying for four showers, you name it, I've kind of done it. So, um, yeah, so big change to come to NRS, but uh, a real challenge and a real opportunity as well. It's really been interesting. Pass back to Alan. Oh, is it me? I'm up next, sorry. Okay, so what do we do at NRS? Um, one of the big things the clinical team does at NRS is offer um, the opportunity for you as prescribers, if you are prescribers out there, um, to contact us and get advice and guidance on specific pieces of equipment. Um, we get over 300 emails every month and we do try very hard, although we will receive an email reply that says, or reply to you within 48 hours, we probably will probably, in most cases, reply to you within about half an hour. Um, we're very good at trying to keep up with those um, and really making sure that you know if you need help with something, we will try and provide that for you. Um, we also have, we all have mobile numbers that are listed on the ordering system, so people can contact us individually. Um, and if you want to discuss something, you can just drop us an email and say, give me a ring and we'll give you, give you a call. Kinds of queries that we tend to get um, tend to be around equipment choices. Uh, they tend to be around um, why something might fit on a bed or might not fit on a bed. Or they'll send people will send us a photograph of the, a, a weird and wonderful bath shape and say, "Help! What can I fit in this bath?" Um, and so we'll send lots of suggestions, and we obviously have the opportunity to look at recycled stock where things have been ordered, not as the on-the-shelf uh, core stock equipment, but things that have been ordered as one-off, um, and then they come back into us, and that might be something that you might be able to reuse. We do also get the kinds of queries about there might be a recycled piece of equipment, and somebody wants an extra measurement, they're not sure if it's going to fit their client. And we can also invite prescribers to come in and have a look at equipment in person if they want to double check that. So, you know, we're more than happy for people to come along. Um, anything and everything you can ask us, and we always love a photo coming through on there, going like that. What does that, I'm not quite sure which way that bed is, uh, but we will always try and help you. We also have an online service called Safe and Well, and it's been developed and run by the clinical team at NRS. So it's an online service which has a questionnaire. It's 
maybe aimed at self-funders or those people you know, who wish to sort of take uh, more responsibility for purchasing equipment. So, well, they might want to purchase something a bit more fancy than the, the equipment that we get at, uh, in stores. Um, it's an online, there's an online questionnaire which people can look at different aspects of um, personal care or domestic tasks and it will kind of generate some hints and tips of equipment that they can buy. We try to send people to local um, shops and Katie, Denise, Georgia and Jenny will run and say for well. So any queries or telephone calls that people come in, they'll try and answer queries. We can also do a home visit, that's the only funded aspect of Safe and Well. I think it's around £165. Pounds. We don't do very many visits because we can find we can signpost people and help people rather than having a visit. If we do need a visit, then we'll go out, do a visit, do a full assessment, write a report, give recommendations, and then we might do a telephone follow up. But we we'll very rarely do them. I think I've only ever done one in Brighton. We didn't really know. We did one last year. <laughs> But they are very few and far between because most people actually are eligible for social services assessments. It tends to be those people. It tends to be those people that um, I've got relatives, so they're wanting to do an adaptation, maybe, and they've got some advice on how to adapt a bathroom. And we'll go out and we'll, you know, we'll do a full assessment, but we'll also give them some sketches and things on how to uh, remodel model if they want to do that and they don't want to go through social services they're maybe not entitled to a grant or any extra funding from the government so um, you know we'll help on those cases. Yeah. There's also links to tech care on there as well and there's also kind of health apps and all cards so we can advise people to if they've got carers who have access to the internet or mobile phones you can put various health apps that might be Okay, so one of the things that the team in Kent do is gatekeeping. So when was so I was asking for a new piece of equipment, Denise, Kate, George and Jenny will look at those orders. And if they think they've got something that um, is similar spec to that um, in the depot, um, because they're regularly cataloguing like that, that equipment, they've got a good view of what's in there. They might let you know or let customer services know that there's something similar and is that something that you want to consider um, having or trialling instead of buying something new. And we know Jane is very keen on the team doing that in terms of keeping, you know, keeping an eye on the budget. So that's one of the things that they do. And then, yeah, and recycling. And, recycling. Um, and then they keep stats on whether they've got a signposted um, you to a piece of kit that may be suitable. Keep, um, keep a tally on that, what, what they might say for the local authority and health. And that was £82,000 last year in just suggesting bits of recycled equipment that are, in, that are already in the depot. That you would have purchased already, that there's then no cost to yourself um, to, to, have, to have to pay your, um, for your clients out in the community. So that really important role that all the commissioners So one of the other big parts of our role um, that we've developed over the six years that we've been in Kent has been to develop a whole range of training. Um, we, obviously COVID was a challenge for everybody and we have tried to continue to do some online training um, but we are now back thankfully to doing some face-to-face -face training. For those of you that are possibly prescribers within Kent um, there is a training matrix on the Iris ordering system so you can see what training is available. We're also commissioned to run training from social services, for example. Um, we run trusted assessor training, those kinds of things, um, as a particular, um, uh, particular session, as a two-day training course. Um, within the core stock of equipment that's available on the shelf, um, we also run training on some of those, so you might have a bathing and showering training uh, morning you can come to if you want to just upskill on making sure that you're familiar with all of the kinds of equipment and why you choose one thing 
uh, over another. Um, yes. So here's an example of one of the recent training sessions we did um, with the Motley crew of uh, the KCC technicians. Um, they came to us for a morning. I think it took us an hour to get started <laughs> uh, because they had lots to tell us about. Um, but once we did get started, we actually ran a, an enhanced baking training session. So a lot of the, well, all of the technicians now are going out and doing baking assessments. A lot of you will already know that. So it was really just a refresher and a help for those new staff um, to make sure that people felt that they were up to speed with knowing why you choose one bath lift over another bath lift, for example. Um, so that was that. Um, one of the other roles that we do, we have lots of hats on, um, and one of our hats is that we monitor, um, make sure that when those recycled specials, those one-offs that someone's bought has come back into us, uh, it might be something that's been specially made, it might be something that's a certain size, um, but we want those things to be reused again. That's really important as it's one of our core values, recycling. Um, and um, so as a result of that, we do check everything um, that comes through and make sure that we can uh, make sure that, that product is ready to go out. We also have in the last couple of years been given a budget from social services and from some health departments in order to upcycle the things that get used regularly, like shower chairs. So if one comes back in and it's got no foot plates on it or it's got no armrests or they're looking like they need to be thrown in the bin, um, we can buy those and we have a budget to do that. So that's a really great, uh, great opportunity for us to be able to recycle those items. And it means that as a prescriber, if you are looking to say you're looking for a shower chair, when you look on the recycled specials, it will be complete. It won't have a thought plate missing that you've then got to try and uh, find uh, a quote for from um, another company. Um, and we do monitor, uh, we do monitor everything really that comes through. And we've got a really great team in the warehouse um, who are photographing, and we've given them all the details on how we want that done. So you know we're really very very lucky. Oh, it's not wanting to move. Retry connection, it says. I think the Wi-Fi has been a bit iffy today. Let's try again. Yeah. No, is there anyone technical that knows anything about uh, Wi-Fi? Yeah. Has anyone got any Wi-Fi extenders <laughs> in their bags? Has there been any freebies? No? Okay. <laughs> so, the next slide should talk about... Yeah, just off and trying. The next slide talks about um, the value of recycled specials because we are very proud of the, um, of the savings we're making. Would you put a slide just showing you that in the last, in the last year, um, the Kent team, painstakingly, if you've ordered a bit of recycled equipment, they will find the value of that equipment within the main of the three quick cubes. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. It was 
uh, switch it off and switch it on again in my mind. Okay, so that was our slide about our bumper tool. The next slide is a, a, about the social values. Um, most companies um, are encouraged, and quite rightly so, to give something back to their local community. In NRS um, Southampton and Portsmouth, we've recently did an ad sale down to the Nicker Tower and raised £5,000. I know with Kent um, Sharon, who's the service manager, has, has been actively um, looking to employ Ukrainian refugees in the um, warehouse. There's three people there now. So it's about giving things back to the community. And I know the Kent team are involved in days like today, and Denise is going to tell you about the games. So some of the sorts of things we'll do is if um, we had a, a series of planned for COVID, just, just before COVID hit, to go and talk at an arthritis care group. Um, we've certainly been to Carers Trust, um, they're one of our sort of partnership um, sort of sponsors anyway, we, uh, we, we try and raise money for them as a company. Um, and um, Care Crossroads, those kind of things, and we'll always be happy to come out to teams if you want to find out a little bit more about uh, what we're doing or how we can help. But certainly from a social value perspective, um, our company has really got that embedded. We've got our senior manager now who is looking at uh, making sure that staff are given time away from work, in working hours, to go and help local community groups. And I know that we recently did a project in Ashford where we were painting some community centre. So there's lots of, there were lots of pictures of, about from NRS on their social media showing people with paint all over them and doing all sorts of stuff. So, and it's really great because it's something that actually is, it really brings it home to the people that are working in those offices that get an opportunity to go and do something different. Um, and they really feel as though that's, um, that's something that's helping their local community. So it's been, it has been fabulous. I'll keep them on. <laughs> so the next slide is um, showing you a, a new innovation we've got that's just joined our team. Um, and there's a chap standing there with a camera just behind you, um, Gareth Powell. He's our new videographer and content producer. Sounds very much a little team, doesn't it? Um, and Gareth joined us in January. We're just about up to speed now with all of the equipment, computers and all of the tech stuff that Gareth has needed in order to start producing um, videos and training material for uh, the various trainings, training sessions that we do. As you can see, I'm standing in front of a green screen there, all very exciting technical stuff. Um, and we're now producing, firstly, we're producing videos for individual products that will be available for you to just click when you're looking at a product on Iris. Iris 4, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, is the ordering system for all equipment in Kent. Um, and then the other thing that we're doing is we're also linking those to the uh, products that are relevant on core stock. We're looking at producing short bites of training videos that are less than 10 minutes. Um, and there's one up at the moment, if any of you get a chance to take a look at it, um, and that one is on how to choose a bar lift. Um, and actually it just takes you from the beginning why you would choose one uh, rather than just that sort of random do you want one that lays down or do you want one that sits up? Um, you know, there has to be a clinical reason, there has to be a need, not just a want. And so it's about spending uh, public money to be a wise way um, and remembering that, um, you know, when you're providing equipment for people, you're spending money. Um, so it's about making those right choices and most importantly the right choices for those individuals. Um, so we do try uh, to try and make sure that, that is, uh, is paramount as part of our, uh, part of our training. Um, one of the other things that the clinical team get involved with is um, just more monitoring issues or changes that we on putting on iris. So we often get called by prescribers to say there's an issue with the prescription or something needs changing or if something goes out of stock then we'll, we'll look for a close technical equivalent. Um, and another thing that the team get involved with um, are equipment reviews. So if um, you have prescribers or a prescriber group are wanting something new on the catalogue then the team will facilitate um, 
um, demonstrations of that equipment for various different companies and allow you to score and see what you got, what you want in the catalogue. So that's quite a big, big part of your role. I think it's also really important to say that we have really a really good working relationship with both health managers, commissioners, and social care managers and commissioners. Um, and that makes such a big difference as you know, working in partnership to be able to, um, to look at products, to see what's new to the market. Is what we've got on core stock fit for purpose? Does it need to change? And so, um, you know, if you've got any ideas about anything that you would like to, um, you know, you've got feed it back to your managers. Any new equipment you've seen that you think uh, we do monitor if people are ordering new specials, and once we start to see the same ones coming through, it's kind of question whether that's something that we should consider having available for more staff. So. Questions about the Kent team. I've got a little two-minute um, spiel after after the question time. Is there anything that anyone wants to ask about the Kent team, or, or anything else that's happened, or queries about anything? Yes. Um, right. So it's a very interesting question that you should say that because there is currently um, a training session going on with the KCC technicians who do a lot of the ramping, the outside ramping, that's more fixed. Um, and we are looking to do a video for that. Um, we're actually asking the technicians, I was speaking to them earlier today, asking if they would come in to a more controlled environment where Gareth can set up to record all of the information that they have, and then we will add all of the ramping information that's required when you're looking at portable ramping. Because portable ramping, to be honest, any ramping is a bit of a minefield for most people. People working out gradients and things like that. So we are looking to have a cohesive training video that will help you from considering portable ramping, when to, when not to, and then what the technician service in KCC, which we all know is excellent, what they can provide um, to, com to complement that. So yeah, it's, it's coming. Any other questions? No, you all love us, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one last thing, I think you might have, have you got access to one of these? So all the, um, the clinical team, um, so OTs, OTAs, um, have moved into a new division in NRS um, called the Clinical Excellence Division, which is headed by Rachel Seabrook, who's our clinical director. Um, and we're developing something called a clinical academy, which gives internally is all sort of better ac access to better training. Um, so that we're all upskilled. Denise, Denise and I recently did a um, train the train on movement and handling, and I became a mental health first aid at last week. So very proactive in training um, members of staff within the clinical team. Hayley's an OT apprentice, and then we have a year two, two, I think two apprentice um, OTs we sponsor two apprentices every year. Jenny's just a yeah, student. But what we're trying to do is expand our internal offer in the Clinical Academy to external users, so prescribers. And what we're wanting is your feedback. Is there anything that you would like from us that you don't get anywhere else? It can be condition specific, equipment specific. Now that we've got Gareth, not to put even more pressure on you. Is it, you know, it, it, could, it be, could it be videos? Is it anything that you need um, technology wise? So, any ideas? And we've left you a suggestion leaflet and then within the next year we're going to try and broaden that offer to you so whatever we get you'll be able to access very similar um, to a certain respect so if you can just take a minute or two minutes to fill that in that would be lovely thank you